When I look at Trudeau, there's a couple of things that I see. I see someone who hasn't grown up. I mean, one of the most appalling things about the budget, as far as I was concerned, is that it provides ample evidence, if such was not sufficiently provided already, that Trudeau is exactly what you would be afraid of if you were afraid of him. He, he, he doesn't have an answer to a problem that isn't overwhelmingly predictable ideologically. It's like you don't even need him. You just have to run the ideology. It has the answers. What's the big problem? Equity between men and women. It's like, sorry, that's not the big problem. That's not even, you're not even scratching the surface of the problem with that approach. And your solutions? It's like, you can learn those solutions your first week in women's studies. They're not solutions. They're the sorts of solutions that children toy with when they have no idea what they're contending with. Yeah, well, there's, there's not a lot there, I'm afraid. It's Fixing these complex systems is unbelievably complicated, and you're likely to make them worse when you're mucking about with them haphazardly, right? And so it's way easier just to do this. this he, Trudeau said it back in, wasn't it 2016? Why do we have half, why are half the cabinet women? Because it's 2000, and, was it 16 or 15? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's almost impossible to overstate how shallow that comment is and how, not only shallow, but it's also casually malevolent in an unconscious sense because he had a job to do, which was to evaluate his MPs thoroughly and skeptically and pick the best people, period. But that isn't what he did. He said, oh, well, it's, it's 2016, so I'll appoint half women. It's like, well, that everybody gave him a pass on that, and so here we are. Now we have a budget that's equity-focused. Yeah, well, good luck with that. When I look at Trudeau, there's a couple of things that I see. I see someone who hasn't grown up. So he's Peter Pan. I see someone who's, he knows how to behave in public. That's one thing you can say about him. He's got that, that easy charisma and charm that comes from being good looking, being from a from a from a, a from from a favored background, his the favored background that he's from, he's got by on he's got by on that. And the reason I believe that is because I don't believe that if he had any true character that he would have run. Because he ran on the strength of his name. And he hadn't earned the right to do that. But people elected him, so here we are. And this is what we get. I mean, he, he, he pulled out the ideological card when he formulated the cabinet. And Canadians all went, oh, isn't that cute? It's like, no, it's not cute. It's not acceptable. And now we're paying the price for it. On a few very narrow ideological tracks, we saw the first evidence of that when he put his cabinet together. He insisted upon making it 50% women, despite the fact that only about 22% of the elected MPs were women. And it was easier for him to do that than it was for him to screen people for the sort of competence that would actually be necessary mm. to be cabinet members. So we've seen a fair bit of this behavior, but that was the most egregious example, I suppose. Dr. Peterson, I recall you uh, taking some heat because you said you would refuse to use these gender neutral pronouns. Why was that? Well, I actually said that I would refuse to use the pronouns that were mandated by law because they were mandated by law. I feel that it's completely inappropriate of the government to decide what language the citizenry should speak. There's never been an example of that in British common law history, and I believe that that was a very, very bad precedent. I didn't want to use language that I thought was generated by radical leftist propagandists, and so I said I wouldn't do it. I saw one tweet this morning that said Neil Armstrong should have said one small step for people kind. Yeah, well, you know, Trudeau was listening to an earnest woman try to discuss something important and he interjected a ideological um, statement in the middle of the dialogue and that indicates, I think, precisely the way he thinks. And I don't think he does think. I think he runs an ideology in his head and accepts the output without question. And I think we're really going to pay for it in Canada in ways that we can't yet imagine.